You're always meant for the vice president. Roll call. President is here. Vice President. Here. Commissioner. Here. Outstanding. Secretary. She's not here today. Not here. Treasurer. Is he going? Uh, is not here. Uh, softball Commissioner. Here. Softball. Member at large. Glenn. Here. Outstanding. Okay, did everybody get a chance to look at the minutes that uh, Melissa emailed to everybody? Yes. Yes. I did as well, as everybody uh, agreed to them. I second. I haven't. Oh. <laughs> Slow down, man. Slow down. 7.30. Okay, whatever. I'm trying to catch up. <laughs> I'd like to um, make a motion to uh, vote in the minutes. I second. Aye. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Outstanding. All right. President's report. Uh, basically, this is the slowest time of the year. I really don't have much of a report, but we have been in the process of getting everything ready to go for our fall season. Um, I said, um, again, I know Kyle's been away for three, three weeks, so he missed the last board meeting, but I'm sure he'll talk about in his report about what we have to do equip equipment room wise and all that. Thank God. <laughs> um, that's, that would be Kyle's <laughs> put that on record. <laughs> Um, at my report is pretty mom. Um, I'm going to cover mostly my stuff when we do the uh, new business, the new business in the um, workshop. workshop last night. So that's my report. Vice President's report. Um, nothing really too much. Um, a few things. Um, our umpire clinic is scheduled for September 5th at 630 on field four um, with Danny. Um, also, Danny will be present for the manager's meeting that is also already scheduled um, to go over rules interpretations just to make sure that all managers are on the same page, which will also be covered from the workshop rule changes. And um, still looking to get some volunteers to help out with that equipment room. Um, I know Ed's volunteered to help. Um, I'm sure Danny. Uh, Mancuso will be there, but um, we're still looking for a few more people to go through there and rearrange that room to where it's more accessible and... Uh, I don't know how much help as far as lifting and stuff like that, but as far as organizing, I'm very good at doing that. So. Uh, that that's fine. I mean, any help is, is welcome. I know we're still looking to get a few more things um, donated as well, so I don't know if that's been put out on the website or not, but... Do you Mm -hmm. Huh? Huh? Hmm? Donations? Donations. Okay. Yes. No, that has not been put Can on we put that out yes. there saying anything's welcome from slings to shoe or yes. cleats, etc.? Um, do you know a date of what day you're going to do the equipment room? No, we need to take a look at it. Okay. But that's all I got. All right, treasurer's report. We'll wait for him to get here. Um, commissioner's report. All right, commissioner's report. I've been working on upcoming fall season, looking for managers, and I'm very encouraged by what I have so far. These are commitments. These are people that I've spoken to already. They're saying I'm going to manage this season. I have four managers in T-ball. Um, so far, it looks like two in AAA and two in AA from what I can see. 8U, I have four, maybe five managers ready to go. Uh, 10U, same thing, I have five solid ready to go. Uh, in 12U, I have two so far, and in 15U, I have two. 
Um, I've reached through all, I went through the whole list from last season from all our managers. I've reached out to everyone. I haven't heard back from two, I believe. And that's not including all the managers that are now traveling. So this, these are all rec managers here. They're ready to go. They're committed. They're excited. Um, I've introduced myself to new candidates. And that's what I've been working on. I'm, I'm encouraged. I think that's a good start, you know, being in August already. So we'll, I'm going to make sure that I have them all ready to go for evals, helping us out. If they have coaches, bringing everybody ready to go so our evals will run smooth. And we'll have, we're definitely going to be ready for, for the season coming up. So that's what I have. And that's what I've been working on uh, this week. Uh, Amy, the email, awesome. Thank you today. My email was on fire today. Yeah, I mm -hmm. definitely had a lot of people reaching out. That's on top of the text message that I was sending out. Um, that was great. Uh, what else? There was one more thing I wanted to say. DDs. DDs. I'm still thinking of DDs. Um, we lost. We lost quite a few, so I'm still trying to think in my mind who I want to reach out to. Um, I know you did 15U, but you're president now. So. Does a division director have to be a coach? No. no. Okay. Maybe Martin McKenna would. I was gonna say. Yeah. I know Casey Hunter said he would yeah. help out as well. Really? Okay. Awesome. Um, I have, well, Tony is going to overlook T-ball. I already, we already spoke to him, like, he's going to over, overlook T-ball for sure. Yeah, so yeah, I have Tony, that's good. Tony for sure. Um, Daryl is, is going to be away this season, he's saying, for now. So uh, I'm still thinking of DD candidates, but I will have some good DD candidates where we can, you know, all work together and be on the same uh, page. How about maybe Chris Rolf? I was going to reach out to him. I just wasn't sure if, if they're still playing or what was going on. But that was, yeah, 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 I was playing. getting there. Yeah, I was getting there. Chris and maybe yeah. Kim. Those those were some names I was thinking okay. top of my head. Yeah. Um, when you DDs. get your list together for your DDs, um, let me know because I want to put them on the website. And when you make your text message group, make sure you add me so that way I can do my thing. Okay. Uh, oh, now I remember. Um, Sign-ups. If anyone puts that they want a manager coach that I don't know about, please let me know and I'll reach out to them right away and figure out, cause I wanna have everybody set before the season starts. Yeah. So I everybody's drafting, we don't have no ghost team. So that's my goal. I know that people can select that they wanna be a manager. I just haven't figured out the, all the reports and stuff quite yet to see how to figure that out. Yeah. But I can try and work on that tomorrow morning and see if I can figure out. My internet's been down for like three days and <laughs> Hopefully Comcast will be there tomorrow to fix it. Yeah, so. e even coaching. If there's a if there's a way, uh, yeah. if there's a way to figure it out, well, I'll, I'll contact them right away. It's in the reports. I just don't know which reports, ones I have I, to go I, through. If you, if you have access, you can get to it. If you look okay. at the reports, it's one of them reports will show you who, okay. who did the managers, who did the coaches. I mean, it literally in team moms and everything. I remember seeing all that in one. Yeah. Of the yeah. Reports. Yeah. I'm just I'm just going by uh, from the spreadsheet that you gave me from last season. What I have right now. Uh, I've also reached out to some coaches that I know and things like that. So this is what I have so if, far. If Ed gives you or somebody gives you access to the, are you got access to all them reports yet? No. If you could get that and you no. play around with it, there's a lot of good stuff on there. Yeah, just let uh, let me know. I'll look at it. Go straight to the reports and just play around with all those reports. Is that the website? Or? Yeah, I have to. Um, I know because I was trying to figure everything out and I was taking people off and adding just people on. Square, right? Yeah, um, I have to get. Um, I have to give you um, clearance or whatever it is, like I, whatever, um, yeah, access. You gotta set, text me your username for the thing, okay. and then I look it up by that, and then I can give you. It's called roles. I can give okay. you whatever roles you need. I thought I used to have it. Carson's cool. I looked the other day and I couldn't get one. Yeah, so that's what I had in mind next. After once I hear from from everybody and just new people. And get them in and see if I can convince them, you know, maybe team up some coaches and have coaches together to run teams. So that's, uh, that's all I have for the commissioner's report. Good stuff, good stuff, Miguel. All right, uh, let's go to softball commissioner's reports. Everything's going good with softball. I have um, two people that have reached out to me that want to be 12U managers and or coaches. Um, so that's where I'm at so far. Um, got to reach out to my old coaches. I know one of which is not coming back. Um, so I got to reach out to some other people and see who's all coming back, who's doing what and everything. But other than that, softball's good. Fantastic. Uh, let's go to our treasurer. Are you ready for your report? Um, we have about 12,000 in the bank, but 
two village checks still haven't cleared. I put them to they should be soon. Okay. No, that, that other than that, those are the only two things we have coming out. And I don't know. Last night I didn't need to go grab um, that one. How much was that one? Was that the first one? <coughs> Oh, the, uh, no, it was 250 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. So the only thing that's coming out is like uh, $5,000. Well, the, the uh, trophy one's still going to come out for the Willow's Bash. Yeah. I, yeah, the, the Scotty's one came out, so the trophy and the two. Um, I'm meeting with Payne, I think, Thursday to give him that check. So. Oh, okay. Other than that, that's all coming out. All right. Village report. Nothing about all that dirt on field five? Or? It'll be gone by Monday. It should be done by Monday. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, so obviously, the secretary's not here today. Did she give you anything to talk Just, about? Oh, okay. I'll cover all that. That's really workshop stuff. All right. I would like to make a motion to vote in all the reports. Second. Nope. Opposed? All right. All right, old business. I really have nothing about the old business. Oh, the walk updates. That's right. But, uh, my apologies. Walk updates. Are we just sticking with what we had? Or are we, or are we doing? I don't, you guys wanted to change some things, so. I know, but if you're not going to be there. We need to vote for the opening date because it's still. It, that's, we, that's new business. Then, no. Well, if we need to add more dates for the walk updates. You guys just have to tell. I, I can do this Thursday. Obviously, I can't do tomorrow. Because I win tickets to Blanco Brown. Um, but uh, I can't do Friday because it's my daughter's birthday. But I can do the next week. We can do the whole week if you want. It's up to you. I think we blast it and make it happen since everyone will be back in town. Everyone will be back to school. Okay. I, say, I say we can use social media and email like we've been using it and blast it. And We're going to school. Yes. Yes, I am going tomorrow to Print It Plus to get um, them all taken care of and then hopefully printed and given to the schools before school even starts so they can give them out on like the first day. Steve, this question is for you. Did we get approval for the food trucks in that area? Got to fill out the special event for permit. Oh. Is that on the website, on your website? Um. Remember, we've never done this before, so I need a little bit more guidance in it. Um, <laughs> I think I've, I've done it one time. We did get notarized, right? Yeah, it's got to be okay. notarized. Right. So I'll, I'll send it. I'll do okay. it tomorrow. I'll, okay. I'll, I'll, it should yes. be on the website. If it's not, what was, I'll just email it, it to you. I know I had I emailed. Is, like, I've done it. I got two for Chris. I remember last last year I got two notarized to lay at my office. Yeah. I remember getting two done as well. I'll try and do it. Was the the map I sent you was that sufficient on where we? I didn't get the chance to look at it. Where, where was it? Okay, so you know where people aren't supposed to park by the tennis court, that mulch area. Yes. And people park there anyways. We could probably fit three there, and then it wouldn't affect mm -hmm. parking. And it's somewhere central that people are walking by, they can get to and stuff. Oh. Um, either that, or one thing I thought of because I went and walked and looked is um you know where the handicapped spaces are right by the t-ball concession right you're not going to be using t-ball concession right no um so putting like they have all that brick there that brick area you right. can put like two or three right there okay and potentially have them there because so, that's what everybody's walking right by there to go by you know right. at least half the people will the other half go the other way but okay um I'll, I'll talk to mike tomorrow and see which of those he likes best okay Awesome. Thank you. What's a, a special, just I'll look it up on Special that. event permit. Special <laughs> event permit. Okay. All right. New business. Um, opening day. I was looking at the schedule, and we used to start opening day a lot earlier. And I remember we, we got a hurricane that affected us two seasons ago, and we kind of condensed everything into eight weeks. For the the playing season i'm talking about and it 
it really doesn't leave you any wiggle room. And the reason why we did that is because we were down for two weeks because of the hurricane. You know, the trees were down, and it was a mess. Um, so I want to get back to the way it used to be. I mean, we really can't do anything about, you know, starting practices or any earlier. I mean, doing it this way, we'll get two weeks of practice. This is an instructional season, so really two weeks of practice and going into games is really not, a, to me, a big deal because it's instruction. You know, the best way to, I feel, to instruct is in games. That's how you find out where you need to work on things. So when would the first practice be? It would be the 13th of September. As we're going to follow the same calendar that was put out in the beginning as far as drafts, because we, because the fields all don't open up till that Saturday, which is it the 14th or the 13th? 14th, Saturday. The 14th. The 14th. But yeah. We're not doing anything. I, don't, I just remember when we were in eight the practices started like August 20th. Yeah, I know it used to. I I know it used to start. We used to do evals before Labor Day. Yeah, we used to. I know we used to do it that way. And 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 when that hurricane hit, everything got condensed, and it's just too, it's too much. Well, the other thing is you also started doing the summer bash, and that pushes the field closures back as well. Yeah. You didn't used to do that, so you would be. Able what to is how many days? Yeah. What is the – is it 30, four weeks, 30 days? What is it for per field? They want to close in the summer and then in the winter. Um, they like them closed, I think, a month each, at least a month each. And, uh, and the thing, um, you have June, July, and August, where they got to be closed for at least a month. And then December and January, they got to be closed yeah. for at least a month. Now, July and August – July and August should cover it for closures, correct? I mean, correct. So you know, if we do evals the week before, we don't need a week before Labor Day. We don't need all the fields anyway. So you open the fields after Labor Day. That's plenty of time. You know, we start practicing after Labor. Day. We don't need fields to do e uh, eval. We don't need all the fields to do evals and drafts and all that stuff. All that all that nickel and dime stuff that we got to do to get ready to start practicing. We can do that earlier in the year, earlier in the month, without all the fields. Correct. Yeah, yeah you've almost never done evals with all the fields open. You've yeah. always done it before. Yeah, so if we're doing that before Labor Day, get all that done before Labor Day, we can start practicing after Labor Day and go into the season. We used to start the season, I believe, the third week of September and have our season. We had plenty of time to play with because of the rain. Right. The rain always, there were some teams, there were some teams that only played, I remember that, eight games last year because of the rain, you know, and there was nowhere to make them up because we got to close the fields again right after Thanksgiving. Right. You know, because you need that two months to start up the uh, spring season. So uh, for, for this year, since, you know, we only, you know, this is our first season doing it, and, you know, we're, we're trying to get in and make things back to the way they used to be. At least we can make our opening day a little earlier. And I want to um, make a motion to vote that we start – we have opening day on the 28th. Well, actually, the opening night will be the 27th, and opening day, the first games will be on the 28th of September. A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. And then next year, I mean, we'll, we'll readjust everything as the year goes on. Um, I actually, you know, and we'll figure out the field closure a month per field. But I, I'm looking to try to do a uh, wood bat tournament towards the end of the uh, month of January. So we'll have to look at the field closures for that also. And the start of spring season. I wanted to start a spring season a little earlier this year. I know we... We started, we started late and ended late compared to everybody else. So it's another adjustment I want to make for the spring. But we'll get into that <clears throat> down the road. Um, Steve, do who – because I'm trying to coordinate opening night and it's my first time doing it on my own or whatever. Um, not on my own. I have people helping, but you know what I mean. Right. Um, do you ask the mayor and village people? Okay, so can you ask them all to come for the 27th? Did we get ironed out the national anthem and the color guard and all that? 
Um, I, I have someone that can do it, uh, my friend's daughter. So we're, hit, we're, we're not doing the chorus. No, the chorus isn't able to because the um, choir teacher is actually on maternity leave until like right before, she comes back right before so they have no time to like get a choir together and practice. Yes, I, I have someone. But she did say that they would come and do it in the spring. And Royal Palm High School is coming to do the color guard, do the flags. Melissa asking. Yeah. Oh, Melissa was asking that. I, I didn't yeah, know I wasn't asking. Was asking. That. Okay. And then there was one other thing. Pastor, I'm waiting. The, oh, okay. Yeah, I'm waiting on a response from him. I emailed him the date so he can double check. But okay. I'm pretty sure he'll do it. Okay. So. All right. All right. Workshop. The fun workshop we had last night. Thank you for the people that showed up. Which no room are here? Thank you. <laughs> uh, we had six people show up. You know, it is At what least it, is. it was one from but each we, age division, yeah, though. But I think a lot of a lot of stuff did get covered, which was good. I, yes. A lot of stuff that should be covered. I'm going to go over a few things. Uh, some of this is just stuff that we covered, but some of it's going to be stuff that we're going to try to vote in or we'll discuss and whether we should vote it in now or wait. First thing is evaluations. Uh, we decided what we're going to do is we're going to have two league evaluators from a different division evaluate. And then we're going to have two outside guys evaluate and we're going to do it with pencil and paper like the old fashioned way because I believe we had a lot of, lot of mess ups with those iPads trying to do the evaluations on them. People were getting mixed up. Uh, numbers were getting, you know, some people were doing one best, ten best. Another person was doing one one best, ten bad, one bad, ten good. It was all mixed up. This way, everybody will be on the same page. It'll be on the paper of what the scaling rate is. The, the person, the name will be in the right spot. Everything will be there. So... I think it'll be a lot better. I know it's a lot of a little more work for us, but I think it's better f to get a better evaluation of these kids. There was a lot of mix-ups last year in evals, and it didn't. It just didn't fly. So <coughs> I'm gonna look at the. I want to look this over. Uh, this is something I can we can wait to vote in. I'm gonna look at the language and make sure before we make a vote on this, we put the right language in. Uh, so I'm, we're not gonna vote on that tonight but it's something that we discussed, but we'll make it happen. Everybody agree? I mean, yep. All right. The freezes. Um, I know, I, me personally, I think the freezes are fine the way they are, the three freezes. It, you know, it's three freezes only. It eliminates, I don't want to bring back hardships. I know there's only a couple or whatever, but me personally, I. Three freezes is three freezes. There's nothing wrong with having your coaching staff. You know, if if the kids are evaluated correctly and they're put on the draft board correctly, there should be no there should be no issues with, you know, say one team gets two first rounders and a second rounder, they're gonna pay the price. I've I've personally gone through that myself. Twice. It works twice. Yeah. So, I mean, thoughts on it? I mean, do you guys? My, my you question. Argue over like two people want the same freeze. Like, <laughs> no, we wanted to bring it back down to two freezes the way it used to be. And then remember when we had used to have it was only two freezes, but then we had hardships, and everyone wanted to have a hardship, and it was a big mess, and so we just eliminated all hardships and just made it three freezes. We tried the six freezes so in some people, divisions. Like people ever like two two different coaches wanted the same freeze? No. No, that was that's never really been a problem. Um, I think, to me personally, the biggest problem was evaluations. Evaluations was causing a lot of it. My question for the three freezes: <clears throat> Is there a way to, or is it not possible? But with <laughs> because it'll come up in the spring when you have your travel teams. Those you want kids to get coached by travel coaches, correct? Like that's kind that's the goal. If you have three freezes and you have the three travel coaches, then they're one team. Where if you have the two freezes, that makes... 
Okay. No. Because that's you're gonna have good. you're gonna have two age divisions in that division, so you're they're gonna get coached by a travel coach. That's the idea, anyways. It may not be their travel coach, but right. No, but I'm saying last, like last year the three they they split them up because the kids are getting. That's split what up, I'm asking. So a coach with each group of three. Okay, that's what I was asking. Okay. It's, it's how they do it. Okay. I mean, it worked out perfect in 12U because we had two teams, right. and every team, I mean, I froze my three kids, but I was also able to draft a couple other travel kids because there were so many. Right. You know, so every team, and they had the choice to draft them or not. There was some, there was one coach that chose not to draft them. That was his prerogative. I mean. We're pretty, we're, we're pretty close to having two in every Yes. Yes. Because it's 11s, 12s, 9s, and 10s. You know, we're, it's going to take us another year or so, but we'll have two in there. We're getting there. So it won't be a so I, I, I think we just leave that one alone. I mean, I really don't. I mean, unless you guys got other opinions about it. As, as long as we actually stick to the, you get three freezes, we don't change yeah. anything at the draft. Crap. Listen, it's. I know, yeah. but I'm just. 15 U is going to actually have an evaluation and a draft this year. Okay, so it's. They didn't have that No. Who knew? They just picked. I don't know how you did that with four teams. I don't. My apologies. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, trophies and awards. This is something I would like to vote on tonight. Um, I would like to get back to, I feel in the fall, we should keep it the way it was, or the way it used to be, where. T-ball teams, AU teams, all got trophies, participation, first and second for the first and second because we're doing tournaments, correct? Mm -hmm. uh, first and second for those tournaments. But also 10U, I believe in the spring, 10U, 12U, 15U, we did rings for those first and second place teams. I, I believe we should do it in the fall too. They pay the same amount of money. Why not? You know, I mean, it, and softball in, gets trophies. Same, yeah, same thing with 12 I mean, they did participation for 8U2 or just first and second? We only usually have two teams, so it's everybody. But uh, up in 10U and 12U, what do they do? They got, everybody got participation across yeah, the board. Yeah. And, okay, yeah. what about even, even if in you In the did, spring, we do first and second place, but in fall, we do participation across the board. What about 12U? They got participation. Okay. But there was only two teams. Yeah. There yeah, was only yeah. one 12U team. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, fine. So yeah. it's... It was, a lot of those, it was a lot of those first year ever playing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'm fine with that. Okay. Okay, I'd like to make a motion to vote in participation trophies for all the softball teams and for 6U and 8U in baseball. Mm -hmm. First and second for the tournaments the rest of the way up. Uh, second. Ten years. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay, all stars. Two things, two topics here. First topic is uniforms. Uniforms are now going to be Royal Palm Predators for everybody. That's, that's our name. That's what's going to be affiliated with Royal Palm, just like gardens. When you think of gardens, thunder. You think of Okahili, tribe. Uh, Phipps, Barracudas. That's all their travel names. That's, that's, that's what you associate. So Predators will be associated with Royal Palm All-Stars. So, I, go ahead. I'd like to add something to it. How, it, even though they will be Predators, it will need to be a special uniform for All-Stars because we want to, like the kids that aren't on the travel teams We'll have to purchase this this uniform, so we want everybody to look the same. And when you have a travel team that has like 12 U Ed's team, you know you have a bunch of jerseys that you've had for many times. It's not necessarily fair to the kid that's coming in to have to buy 12 jerseys to be able to match every like if you alternate the jerseys through each game. I think that's a team decision. I mean, if a team has multiple jerseys. I just meant make it a special jersey just for all stars. So like still see predators and all that, but it doesn't have to even say all stars on it. Just make it like it's a special one just for this red, white, and blue. Or so what, what she's saying is, what she's saying is during all stars, we're all going to be roll palm predators. I, I love that. 
but don't like if you're we need to let the coaches know on the travel teams don't say okay we're going we're playing you know this tournament we're going to wear this uniform this tournament we're going to use this uniform this tournament if there's different uniforms for the travel team because if you're rec kids which we're going to have some make the all-stars we only want them to have to buy one jersey you know some one all-star jersey just like we always do Unless so, they fundraise for it, you know, in their All Star, they can fundraise for an alternative jersey. But I understand that's what she's saying. I, I get, yeah, everyone's going to be uniform. Yeah, don't yeah. make the red kid buy three different renegades. I, I don't think there's going to be. But the point, the, one of the, the points, the point of this, one of the po- one of the points is that the travel team has a uniform ready. Why should they have to buy a whole nother uniform? You know, they've spent a lot of money but paying it's not for a travel. One that they'll, they'll never like if. For instance, Ed Case, since you're here, if your team went to, if we did All-Stars and we did Predators jerseys, it doesn't say All-Stars on it. It still says Royal Palm Beach Predators, but it's red, white, and blue. You'd be able to use that at a 4th of July tournament, at a Memorial Day, a Labor Day. You know what I mean? Like, he'd be able to use it again throughout the year. It's not, so it doesn't take away from the travel kids because it's a jersey that they would, they could use again that year. But it's... I, I don't think you're going to have a travel coach that's going to say, hey, you're going to have to purchase all 12 of the uniforms that I already I have. I know that, but I'm just saying, like, but I I'm, know that some of the travel teams have four or five jerseys they use throughout the year, and it's nice to, you know, not have to wear the same jersey over and over again. I get that, but at the same time, if you got a kid who is a rec kid that get, makes it to his all-star team because... For financial reasons, they can't be on a travel team, but they're good enough to be on an all-star team. They're not going to be able to do the four jerseys that he may want to use for mm-hmm. this this tournament, this tournament, this tournament, this tournament. But if you have like a cool-looking jersey, it does. Like I said, doesn't have to say all stars. They might just have an extra. Nicky Lake. I mean, the, the that, coaches that. are going to do everything that they can. If he really wants that kid to be on that team, he'll find whatever way he can do, whether it's fundraising or whatever, to make it work for that player. But Ed, he's going to do that. Sometimes. To press. Just press the button, the light comes on, and just say your name. My name is Ed Case. Um, I see what you're saying, Amy. Um, you know, at the same time, part of it, having multiple jerseys, like we went to Lake City, it was a blessing having more than one jersey because we're playing back to back to back to back. And those jerseys are going to be readily available. They're not, you know, cost prohibitive. They're pretty affordable, probably like 25 26 bucks. Um, I think in that scenario, we could probably do fundraise, use fundraising funds or um, I don't think it's something I understand your concern, but we only have we have two jerseys. One is on its way out. It's tattered. It's worn. We'll probably never have more than two active jerseys, you know, so if they did have to, it probably wouldn't be too bad. Um, But I am, you know, I think, you know, what I was going to propose is when All Star comes around to do another jersey for, you know, you might have some teams form at age divisions where there are no teams and they can have that option to have that jersey made up, you know, um, with a different color scheme possibly and those sorts of things. So um, instead of having everyone have to buy the same one to give the teams options, um, I think this year when All-Stars comes around, maybe that's something that we can discuss as far as how we're sourcing the jerseys. But, um, you know, we should be able to have more flexibility with, you know, if this team wants this jersey, they can have it. As long as it says Royal Palm Beach on it, we're all in the same same boat, you know. Royal Palm Predators. Predators. Yeah, I, I agree. All right. Anybody got any other opinions about this issue? Royal Palm Predators. Oh, it, it, it'd be the oh, same thing, good. just like we normally do, and we're just yeah. going to be the Predators. That's yeah. it. it can be maybe a, an alternate color or something like that for, mm-hmm. for all stars, but as long as it says that we're all Predators, and I don't really see an issue. Okay. All right. Perfect. All right. The other issue with all stars, I'm gonna we're gonna make a, I'm gonna make a motion for both of these when I'm I'm finished. But the other is our is our all star format for each division. Okay. I'm going to use the 10U division as an example, okay? And uh, I just want to have this. This is something I want to put in our bylaws. This is the way we follow our selection process for the teams. So, for example, this is an example. 10, we have a 10U division. Cal Ripken has 10U and 9U divisions, okay? So 10U, the 10U team takes the best top 12 kids there is after evaluations. The 9U takes the top 9U teams. 
Okay, that's our, our purpose here is to have the best of the best playing on a 10U team, a 9U team. Then you have a B team. B team is made up of whatever's left. I mean, it's a lot of good best talent and the whatever. best, you know, you make a B team because what Cal Ripken does is, and we have people on this board, they have B divisions for 10, 10 U and up. All, 10 U and 12 U in Florida. That you can go up to Lake City or Ocala, and they're usually usually the two hot spots where they're at, and they participate in A B division, and they have a good time. Glenn, I know can uh, access to this, and did, did you you did it one year last year, right? Yeah, and it's a, a lot of fun. They get the chance to travel. They get a chance to and and a lot of the local tournaments this year. I don't know if you noticed. I know Phipps and myself. We did like in 12 U. I did an A and a B division. I just named it like American and National division, so no one was say, "Oh, you're a B division," you know. So a lot of our local tournaments are gearing to that now. Uh, even Oscar did it. Right. So you know, there's a lot of competitive baseball for B teams to play in. So. That's the format I want to keep, that I want to stick to. I think we should stick to as a league because the best needs to play on that team. I just want to clarify what you're saying. So back to 10, we'll use 10U as an example. So the top 12 10U aged players. Correct. Play on 10U. Okay, that's what I want. And then, it's, and then the top 12 9U aged players play on that team. Because that, that, when they go to districts, that's what they're playing. They're playing 9U teams. The best of the best. I got a question. Um, um, and I'm just trying to figure this out because I lived it firsthand. Um, you have a player who's one of the top players in that age division, say 10U, and um, he doesn't try out for the A team. He tries out for the B team. You have to try out for the A team before you can try out for the B team. It's just like in Cal Ripken. Okay. You can't have a B team until you have an A team. You have to try out with the A team before you You see what can, I'm saying? Yes. Where where parents can listen, if they are a top twelve kid and they say they don't want to play on an A team, then they don't play. Then they, if if they get if they don't want to try out for the A team, if they don't want to come to the first tryout, because that's what it is. They don't want to come to the ten year old tryout or the nine year old tryout then they can't come to the, the, the... It better be a really good excuse why they don't come to that tryout. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, if a kid wants to be on an all-star team, he needs to come to the tryouts. I mean, it, I, why would you not want to be on the best of the best? I agree 100%. Um, say you don't like that coach. Say your parents don't get along with that coach. Say there's a personal conflict. Mm -hmm. That's something that needs to be brought to the board. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah. If the, if you're if but you're we're, we're defeating with that coach, I wanna I you can bring it to the yeah. board because sure. there are players just sure. like that sign that say they can't, and then we can say okay that makes sense. Yeah. You know what I mean? Their parents got in a fight, a physical. Yeah. You know, there's been all there's been you know all kinds of yeah. whatever. So. Oh, I I know I I've heard, I heard the drama in that division. That division. You know, I'm just saying, you know, we need to make sure they're trying out for that, and if they do have an issue, they need to come to the board. Yes, They're unique situations, if you want to call That's them. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, sure, but I, there was a lot of, you know, it happened between the 11 and 12 U teams where there's like this kid would only play with this coach, this kid would only play with this coach, and it was one of them was on my team. So um, I want to get away from that. Um, what happens? You know, what happens if you have an 11 U, 11 year old kid who is definitely 12 U a capable can he play up or no. does he no. have to stay out for the 11 yes right. that's why I, that's yes he goes to he's trying out for the 11 u team i just want to make it clear on the so, record so when because uh, i'm not sure about 10 u because i know it's one rec division but then there's nine u all-stars and 10 u all-stars correct yes, sir. so um i know you mentioned league age 10 but like you know in my scenario i'm going to be coaching you know hopefully a nine u team um, if those kids go and try out at the tryout and the 10 U coach wants to grab some of those kids because no. they're no. no. Okay. And what about the scenario where I fill out my roster with 12, nine year olds or eight league age nine, 
and then there's maybe a few more left over that are good enough to play are better than some of the 10 year old kids can those kids yes go to the ten? okay all right you fill out your roster first yeah now they remember you have to fill out a 10 you have to fill out an 18 first okay so after you take the your best 12 you know, and there might be a nine year old that doesn't make the nine U eight team that might be good enough to make the ten U eight team. Yeah. You just never know, you know. All right. My, but, the way theoretically it's supposed to work is you have your ten best twelve or ten best. Those handled as separate tryouts. Years. You got your number yes. or is it one trial? No, it's okay, so it's separate tryouts. So you you take your twelve nine best nine year olds that are the best. Glenn takes the best. 10, I don't think they should be separate you. tryouts. So then, all the kids that are left over will come to another tryout for the ten UB team. team. Is how theoretically gotcha. that should work. Okay. So then, the best of who is—I don't want to say who's left because that sounds kind of crappy—but the best of who's left then makes up the ten UB team. Well, part of part of the reason why I'm asking this too is because there's a, a possibility that we could have two. 9U travel teams. You can have teams. an A and a B 9U team. That's what I'm saying. Yes. Like yeah. if, if we can have like a, okay. Yeah. All right. You can have a, a, an A and a B 9U team as well. You can stay <laughs> inner, inner eight. You know, you can stay nines. And here's we, I mean, if they're. Just saying if the 10U coach if they're says, good hey, enough, that kid, I'd like to have that kid on my team when we want them for enough, the 9U team. If they're good enough, you can have two 9U A teams too. Yeah, that's true too. You can do So, that. I mean, we can have as many A's as we want. We just can't have any B's until we have an A. Okay. Yeah, but they, they won against them. I know, I know. <laughs> All right. Basically, what I really want to vote in is the format the way it should The format needs to be in our rules of the A and B situation. So that's really what I'm, I'm, I'm aiming for here. So I'd like to make a motion. Number, number one, the All-Star jerseys. We are all predator, Royal Palm Predators now for, for All-Stars. And the second is the A and B format for All-Stars. Okay, and so it's the two A teams in each age division. The one age, the A, A, and then you form a B with the other talented kids. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to vote these two items in. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Can I add something to All Stars that I <clears throat> forgot last night? Sure. Um, as someone that that does all the paperwork and stuff. I cannot have coaches and players and teams and all this changing their mind, changing their players, changing this, changing that. It's that's what's stopping it. What we're doing is what's stopping it. Well, it's not going to stop either because then you like this kid, whatever. I, I need I need to have a set date. We need it in the bylaws by the when you turn in your roster by this date. You're done. I cannot edit it. I, even, even if I can, I cannot edit it because it gets too confusing. I'm wasting so much paper and time and resubmitting things, and it's just very so. We'll, we'll bring that back up for the workshop for the spring, yes. and then we'll bring that up, and then we'll have it in the bylaws where it states when mentioned that your rosters are due by this date. It will not change after that date. Yes. All right, next item of business for our workshop was our, this has to do with our Cooperstown tickets. Uh, all right. Okay, you got it. Well, let's do this, real, I'm going in order. I don't wanna mix it up. All right, so Cooperstown. Lexi and Glenn's wife is doing a legwork on this, and she, they need a $1,000 deposit. They asked us if, you know, since it's going to be for our, our league, is to put down a down payment for them. It will be paid back in fundraising. Me, personally, I think this is a huge draw for our park. It will bring people to our park. We've, this is long overdue on getting a Cooperstown ticket. Hold on, Amy. Before you do the date thing, you can fill everything else out. I gotta talk about what Lexi said about the dates. I talked to her on the phone. She said oh. the first week. Yeah, but you gotta pick them all in order and just go first week, second week, August, you know, work backwards. Not school years, because if you notice, <clears throat> two of the weeks in August are during school and nobody wants to go there. Three of the, four of the weeks. Are yeah, so work backwards from there. Okay. 
Okay, that's, that's, that's right. So my point is, is I would like to, since it's an over, it's a thousand dollar fee, we do have to vote on this. I would like to make a motion to vote in a thousand dollars to deposit, which will be reimbursed in fundraising, so we can get the, the process going on getting this ticket for our park. A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. And, and I, I, I might have missed the question last night. Now, <laughs> get a ticket. Is, like, is each ticket good for one age group? It's, it's only 12U. Only 12U. Okay. So every, every travel team, as they go up the ladder, see, this is something that they, they know. Like Tony's team, he's, he's going to be in 7U. He's going to know that when he gets to 12U, he's going to Cooperstown. So he has all that time to fundraise for every year. Every year. Now, it has to be used every year. If we know we're not going to use it, we can sell it to somebody and so they, or sell them that year's rights and they can go but this is going to be a draw for my yeah. park i know like yeah years, this right? is something that's long overdue now, you know just, just like curiosity so well, i guess we never want to sell it but is there like a waiting list yes yes, yes. there is we're trying to get it for 2020 if we can get it for 2020 and that's not that long no it's one year it's, it's, it's like for our 12 year olds this year that can, they can go in 2020 and that's why it may not be the best weeks we're selecting but we're selecting the weeks we can get mm -hmm. You know, it's like the beginning of June and before August, you know, late in August, early in August before school starts. And it's good for... We yeah. own it as long as we don't leave there without it. Yeah. You know, every year, it's good till no. we're done. Yeah. Okay. That's pretty wild. Well. I want to put your contact name down for this. Okay. Yeah, usually, uh, uh, yeah, you own it. We own it. And no. it just gets passed down from 12U to 12U to 12U to 12U. And yeah, put our like PO box. next year, yeah. the weeks may interfere with our All-Stars. But just like everybody said... This is Cooperstown. It trumps all stars. You know, there's no. What's the total cost like? I thought it was like six or seven grand. It's no, it's a thousand ninety-five per it's like kid. A whole team, two coaches. Yeah, it's a thousand ninety-five per kid for the experience. It's yeah, one thousand dollar deposit, and uh -huh. then each, and then the team pays that back, and then each year they pay it. It, it ends up crediting the one thousand to their sixteen total that they need. Right. So it won't affect the next year. Like they're not getting anything special. It's just we're fronting the money right now. It helps the league, whatever. But my thing is, for some reason, I thought it was like six or seven for the ticket itself. It's like five grand per person. Per when 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 you when you break it down <coughs> per family, yeah, it, it's it's you know four or five grand for a family to go up there oh, with their kid. Yeah, I agree. But, but for each kid is a thousand ninety five. Okay. Once we buy it, we don't have to buy it again. Yeah, but I thought the ticket was like a certain amount of money. And then we well, that's what we're, it's we're fronting it's the deposit. In their but it's only a thousand. It's a thousand. That's just it's, a deposit. That's, that's the deposit to try and get our name in the ring yep. to try and get the ticket. At, at, once we get the ticket, we don't have to pay for it again. Yeah. yeah. But how much that's is part per piece? piece? Then there's another three grand due in November. And then the balance is due in March. Yep. So the, the fundraising starts immediately for the 12 year olds. Because they got to get it, you know, they want our fall tournament. They want a home run derby. They want, you know, all this to get their 16 grand together before March. That's 16 grand. The balance is Every due year, in March. It's 16,000 and something. Okay. So, like, okay. he's got a nine new team. He's got three years to fundraise basically $16,500 or, or, or find a really rich guy. Or, yeah. So, so, so um, $1,000 deposit and 16 every year. Yes. The, the okay. worst scenario is our 12 years right now. Okay. Beyond that, it's easier for every age group. Like he's got a great advantage. Tony's got an awesome <laughs> advantage. You know what I mean? Every no, year, no. Okay. as it goes okay. back, you have more time to get your uh, money. I thought when we talked about a couple years ago, mm -hmm. just the ticket itself was set. That we, that no, no that it's. That, that's what I was thinking. That's what I was thinking. Mm -hmm. And then, as the teams come, then they'll just start no, fundraising. Like as soon as we start a T-ball travel team, if we get to that point, seven years our youngest right now, okay. they can start fundraising now to get their 16 and then we're going to have a wood bat tournament each year mm -hmm. to um i like what okahili does to be honest they fund uh, that money goes yep. to the coaches and the umpire to get them up there the, like the that the money from the tournament pays for the two coaches and the umpire i like that but we'll work all that out okay. we just got to get yeah. the process and then i was going. also yep. i was That's talking cool. with glenn a little bit about this too i think what would be beneficial that would help 
kids that maybe an all-star kid that like um, one of the kids in Tenyu is like this killer catcher. Casey DeClue. But he may not be able to, he's, he doesn't want to play travel for whatever reason. If the coach says, hey, I want you to come to Cooperstown with us because, you know, you made our all-star team, you know, whatever. Uh, I think that it should be a Cooperstown account and not necessarily maybe like Ed Case's travel team account. And all the money goes into that if you're fundraising for Cooperstown. So that way, if you do have like a hardship or someone fundraises 4000 but they don't, they can't get that last 1000 but it, that's that stuff we can work out yeah. like in the in the spring workshop. But what I think what makes sense is when you're saying a Cooperstown account, that's the funds that the league raises, like with the home run, with right. this, with that. That we can work out. We can work all that out. But I agree with you. There should be you know something. It's sort of like a lot of saying. It's easy, but a line item on the balance sheet for to that whatever year, and they'll just keep whatever money they get in there, and we'll just keep like a running, it'll be an asset, like a prepaid expense, whatever, and right. it'll be a running asset total. Because if, if we don't use all the money, yeah, because yeah. if we don't use all the money from right. the tournament this year, then that It'll can be roll just over that to much help more in next year for what the league is responsible. What right. we decide we're going to contribute yes. right. to our right. Cooperstown team. Yes, that's what I'm trying to. All right, do sounds good. Let's get. I hate to rush this along, but a lot of good <laughs> stuff here. But uh, <laughs> this is for you, Miguel. I mean, I know it was brought up last night about the the kids getting there on time. It was a big thing in the younger divisions. So something we really want to talk about in a manager's meeting about we need a team there at 6:30. You know, to start these games on time. And that's an umpire thing, too, about these umpires need to start these games on time. Mm -hmm. uh, next, we'll go to T-ball division. The big thing was the stop of play. It needs to be addressed in both the meeting, both the manager's meeting and the umpire clinic with the umpires and the managers. It's not, you, you know, you just put your hands up and the game stops. It's, it's not the way it works. We need to have them ready the proper way of how it works is get the ball in front of the runner. That's when the play stops. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, that was pretty much the biggest thing in 6U. 8U, pitching machine. Um, I'm glad you're here, Mr. Case. Because you are going to lead the clinic. In the 8U division, in a 6U, they're going to learn how to use this pitch and sling from the right distance. During uh, When we have the managers clean it, that will be your station. You've been voluntold. Sorry. <laughs> I'm, voluntold. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm happy to do that. One thing I would mention um, is, you know, when these teams go to All-Stars, the umpire runs the sling. Yeah. And at Okahili, the umpire runs the sling. Yeah, this is... This is basically just to get the – we're right now, financially, I can't have two umpires in an AU game. It's just – You need two? I don't think you need two in a rec game. If he's running the sling, and he's in a good spot. We can too. look into it. I mean, we can do the – if you want to have the kid and the umpires doing it. But if Volkan Healy does one umpire, is that how, in, in All-Stars, they do one umpire, and then he umpires the game and runs this thing? They do two. So at Cal Ripken, they have two umpires. Um but again, it's higher stakes. They don't yeah. want to, you know. It's it's. I'll reach out to Sasha and see what she see, see what they do. Um, I don't know who our umpire chief is. Is it it's Danny? Danny. I mean, I'm sure. Oh, well, yeah, exactly. The people he uses um, know how to run the sling and are trained in it. Um, but then still, these guys really still need to know how to use them yeah. for practices and all that stuff. That's true. No, I'm happy uh, to do a clinic um, because the other thing is the cadence that the umpire uses. Um, points says ready pulls us yes it's important to get the kids used to that so i'd be happy to do that awesome thank you yes yes that was another issue and i believe we're gonna uh, one of the things that is gonna help that is the kid pitch would you like to discuss this for the fall, the the kid pitch, it, I, what did we decide? Did we decide it wasn't going to happen in the no, fall? No, no kid pitch in the fall. No kid pitch in the fall, but come spring. Halfway, do a kid do. We wanted to start halfway through the spring and go from there instead of starting right at the beginning of the season. Pitchers can pitch in clinic. The and then also the top before kids. the halfway mark, we wanted to have two pitching, clinic, two pitching clinics, and then each coach would send up their – 
I guess you could say top five or that would need the work to help advance these kids, especially the ones that are going to be moving up in the mm -hmm. tenure. I, I, I disagree with taking away the kid pitching completely because I really think it, it hinders the kids. Um, they need to expose themselves and be ready when it comes time to tenure. I think starting it halfway through the season gives you a little bit more time to work with some of these kids, especially ones coming up from 6 you. Yeah, and they get used to the sling more. It should be it should be a a quick process going from those two innings of kid pitch to the sling, setting it up and just going. I mean, I really you were an eight you had last year. What was the my, I, some of these managers telling me they weren't getting through their lineups once or twice? What and they were playing three, four innings. Was the umpire not? I played I played five innings every game and six innings quite a few games. Um, so that's why I was just going to ask if there was a lot of opposition to the kid pitch because it is an attraction for our park because it is. it's something different that we do. And when I tell people, um, you know, like now us moving up into nine, you kid pitch, and they're like, oh, man, we're starting from scratch. And I'm like, well, I'm not. And they're like, what are you talking about? I'm like, yeah, we do the first two innings kid pitch. And you're like, are you serious? Like, that's amazing. That's incredible. Like, it's it can be somewhat painful depending on, you know, how it goes, but it's definitely um, a benefit in the long run. So um, then why don't we bench that until yeah. the workshop come spring and make it mandatory for the 8U managers to come? Yeah. That one and get, I think just get their opinion. This. Part of it is this. You, you got to – Make sure the umpires, because this did happen, <clears throat> widen the strike zone. Yes. And they call a very lenient strike zone. If the kid can put a bat on it, it's got to be a strike. Because there were games where that was the case, and there were games where it was a, a cubby hole, and it was just like, <laughs> shoot. Yeah. Then you get the other. I also, I know, then you get the other team complaining. I mean, that's as long as it's consistent listen, for both sides. See, that's where the umpire in the beginning of the game goes at the home plate meeting. Listen, guys, I don't want to hear him complain. It's going to be an open strike zone, wide open. If it's I mean, close, it's a strike. Your, your goal your goal is to get the kids confident and start swinging. Yep. You, gotta get the kids you have to. Back. I mean, it even happens in tenure. you got to widen it a little bit. I mean, I'll never go high on a kid because you can't teach them that. But I That mean, was a step big part out. of the a problem in some games where, you know, kids were getting squeezed a little bit who just started – um, mm -hmm. pitching you know so if you have that understanding with the umpires and we would tell them that <laughs> as managers hey you know be lenient but that's nobody told them that at the beginning of the season like hey this is something that you should be considering I know? mean I'll be honest after watching a few of the AU games this year I thought it was probably one of the most competitive seasons I've seen yet oh, to come especially with the pitching and I, it's getting better and better every year, and I think it's forcing a lot of the coaches to actually start working with more of the kids. The kids love to pitch, and the only thing I would say is starting halfway through the season, you're going to have three or four kids that get to pitch, you know, opposed to eight or nine or possibly the whole team because of that, you know. So it's just something to think about. Okay. I try to get every kid, if a kid could throw a strike in practice, he's, he was pitching in the game, you know, like he was going to mm -hmm. get an opportunity, so – so bench that one. Okay. Benched. Or tabled. <laughs> All right. Ten you know we talked about uh leading. Oh, leading please. off. That was the big discussion in Ten U. So for fall, I think we're gonna opt to go trial. into trial. <laughs> do a trial run with open bases. Back to the old way it was, um, first, second, but third is no leading. You hold on third. No painted lines as far as they can go. No. No painted it's lines. Just, oh, it's just oh, open it's bases. The reason we did this is because it, it helps two different ways. You're teaching the kids how to actually run bases and steal, and they're not going up to 12 of you not knowing how to steal a base. And two, it makes you actually work with your pitchers and their form. You might as well just get a chair and pull it up there. No, I was just going to say, <laughs> that sounds, you know, intriguing, but that's one I would say maybe start halfway through the season so that man managers do have time to work with pickoff moves, work with leadoffs, work with those concepts. Um, just an idea. I mean, um, that's the – a lot of those kids will be their second year pitching. A lot of them will be their first year pitching a whole game. It's good to be able to have them to focus on pitching. But um, I see your, your point to – yeah, I mean, because it came up in, you know, with the tournaments, you know, a lot of the B teams and everything, it's all open bases. So when they go there for the 10-year division, 
you know they've never really seen it before so my recommendation would be at least try it for a full season for the fall just so we can get enough time to realize you know if it's beneficial or not That's something did it used to be open yes so program? when we were two years pony when we were pony it yes. was open bases I mean, or we can, you know, there's only two weeks of practice this year before the season starts. We can do it halfway and do it and do it the full waste, full season in the spring. Because, you know, yeah, that way I mean, it gives them that works. It gives them half the season. So we just need to make trial. sure that we determine what the halfway point is and set the standard right there from the beginning. So there's no, oh, hey, surprise, it's Saturday. Yeah. We're starting open bases today. Yes. So. so that's a trial I like to vote in that as a trial basis for the fall halfway leading off first and second not at third just like we used to do it back in pony and then in the spring we do it the whole season the trial we'll do it a whole trial year and see how it works I think it'll be it'll be beneficial especially in the spring when they go into all-star season you know it's a lot easier to teach a kid to stay on the base than it is to lead off so Yeah, but with with the, with the line, even then, you really didn't see the pitchers really paying attention to them. No. They weren't doing no pickoffs and stuff like that. So that that that's that's the part that we want to get in. Yeah. Yeah. So I I would like to make yeah I'd like to make a motion to vote in this for the open basis for half a season. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. Aye. All right. Oh, yeah, that's stupid. Yeah. And then softball for the games to be bumped in. Yeah. So, yeah. softball doesn't actually have bylaws. Um, I mean, there's something on there, but it's USSA and that's not anything to do with us. So, I need someone to help me. Basically, it doesn't need to be that thick or even that long. Um, create some bylaws for softball. Huh? That's a squirrel. Yes. To do a rough cut. Um, but there's certain things that are in the softball Cal Ripken or um, Babe Ruth, because uh, softball is Babe Ruth, that we need to have as our rules. Um, first, second, and pitcher have to wear a face mask. It is a Babe Ruth rule. It's also a safety concern. So. You mean first and third? First, third, and pitcher. You said first, second. I'm sorry. First, third, and pitcher have to wear a face mask in ten and in all the divisions. Um, and then in 8U softball, they are sling pitch. They're not coach pitch like we were doing before. We actually introduced the sling halfway through the season last season because it was something new we had found out about. So we need to get a, a specific, maybe one or two slings for softball. Um, and then I, 10U, 8U is fine. We can leave it at an hour and 15 minute game time, an hour practice, but in 10U, 12U, and then in the spring we'll have a 14U team. I would like to make the practices an hour and a half long and the games need to be moved to an hour and a half. <coughs> so those are my, my... I'd like to make a motion. I would like to make a motion to put those into our rules for softball. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Nobody. The bylaws while we're doing, like Hilbert's doing, uh, like if you're doing uh, science. All right, that concludes new business. Uh, the floor is yours, Mr. Case. All right, um, just wanted to bring something up. Uh, you know, I came to the workshop last season or in the spring and kind of pleaded a, a similar um, situation or argument. Um, so, as you know, our travel program is growing. Um, it's gaining momentum, it's gaining steam, and, and as a result of that, our overall program is growing. We're having kids come to our park um, from other leagues. Um, you know, in the past, that wasn't necessarily the case. Kids were leaving our park and going to other parks. 
you know, on my team in particular, I have a kid from Gardens, a kid from Phipps, a couple of kids from Okahili. I have more kids that have come over from Okahili interested in what we're doing. So with that being said, when we had our tryout for 9U, um, there was a really good turnout. So there's um, enough kids for us to form a second 9U travel team. And I think that really puts us in a great position moving forward as, as these kids move up through the various divisions um, to, to have the coaching that comes along with it in the rec season, to have the players involved in the league as far as raising the skill level and the competition level. Um, so part of the problem that we're having um, for our second team is just we're very restricted right now. We have Friday nights for practice, and that's it. And there's no wiggle room. There's no leniency or, you know, there's no way around that. So I have a very good coach signed up to coach the second team. He cannot do a Fridays like ever. So, you know, that whole thing kind of melts down if we can't have some flexibility on that travel night for that team. Uh, I'm fine with Fridays, but you talk to every, I was just at the scheduling meeting on Sunday, every other league. Yeah, we got Tuesdays, Fridays, and then, you know, Saturday evenings and Sundays. You know, everybody has two nights a week. Um, and I don't know how they do it, how they pull it off, but they do. I'm not asking for that at this point in time. Um, what I am asking is that, you know, if a coach or a team has a, a restriction that there can be some flexibility where they don't do Fridays and they do one other night, you know. Um, in the fall, I know we don't have as many rec teams as we do in the spring. In the spring, we're able to find practice days for all those teams. This would basically be when they do the practice schedule, just throw one more team in the mix and just give them an hour and a half on some other day other than Friday. Um, that's going to basically be the difference between us having this team or telling this team that it can't happen and all those kids going to other parks and finding another travel team to play on, which is what I really don't want to happen. I think, I think in the fall, which is when you need it, because we don't have as many teams, we could probably accommodate that. And in the spring, it takes care of itself because everybody's playing rec. Correct. So in the spring, you know, we might need that leniency back, if that makes sense. But it should, you guys should be practicing less anyway, you know, because you're practicing during the week with the other team. Yeah. No, so it's as long as, as, long as the flip side of that coin is, you know, this other coach and yourself and all the other travel coaches that are here mm -hmm. uh, understand that, we can make leniencies probably in the fall, but in the spring we need those back because that's when we're loaded up and we're struggling. So when struggling you say need get... them back, you mean basically retract, it goes back retract to it, yes. but it doesn't, okay. So it's not necessarily us giving up anything other than what we'd be receiving in the right, fall. Right, right. We can accommodate, okay. we could probably make it work in the fall, but in the spring, you've seen it. It's like, it's just getting an hour for every team yeah. is, uh, Yep, it's could, tough. Could we rent, and I don't know how much it is, but could we say rent, and if we get a good teams, whatever, could we rent and I have some little bombs for them on Tuesdays? I don't know how much it is, I don't know if that's possible, just so that if we have, if we have two extra travel teams, and they want to practice Tuesdays, would it be possible? How much is it? Would it be worth it? It's a well, I, I, I don't know, I'm just, I don't, I, I think, part of, part of that was probably, my concern last year, because I knew we were only gonna have one night a week to practice. So I went and applied for fields at Seminole Palms and got granted fields. I didn't use them. Um, it no, it's free. What about? It's a process, but it's free. But let me explain how Seminole Palms works now. They're they're actually changing the way they do it. The teams that are already there are grandfathered in, but they're going to start doing where every year, every year the teams are going to have to go into a lottery and they get, you know, picked. Some teams are going to be, you know, they're going to go year to year. They're not going to know whether they have fields or not. So it's a little, it's starting to be a little different over there because there's so many teams that are applying for field space over there. I know, I don't think there's going to, I don't know if Steve can, this is Steve's questions anyway. And this is, he's probably the only one that can answer this if we can get any more field space anywhere if we build this program at a size where. Yeah, Silver Palm, just an example, you know. Yeah. There's no more fields. I yeah, mean. I mean, yeah, I mean, the only, the only other field I know that could be a possibility would be Camellia. Camellia, but those are softball fields, so you can't do any, like, hitting or anything like that on there. Um, softball hits. I did when I rented them. I'm saying softball fields. <laughs> they had no problem taking my money when I rented them, and I hit, I hit baseballs over there. I think if we try what we're talking about, Ed would agree, you know, with spring and wreck and all that, 
giving, you know, not losing Friday night, but giving back the accommodations, you, you probably won't need them as much during the spring. Because I mean, I, yeah, but we will have this I team did, that, you know, I still I still practice with my travel team Friday nights in yeah, the I'm not spring. Saying, I, you I, won't not practice But Friday. that Question. coach cannot do anything on Friday nights, so it's like. Que team that. Question. Um, because I do the scheduling for travel, and I'm going to be helping with the, the other schedule. Softball doesn't do anything at Farron as of right now. Would a feel uh, as of right now Saturday fair all three fields are open. Would him having a practice at Farron help? He can't do it on Saturday. Sat Saturdays we already have fields. Yeah, you know Saturday evenings we have the fields. It's it's um, you know Sundays we have fields, Friday nights we have fields, and Saturday evenings we have fields already. Well, I mean this would be in the morning, so like he like I, I that's uh, I why mean, I'm asking. So this particular coach, he's he's a former um, you know professional baseball player. He only works okay. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Okay. Um, and then he does baseball all, you know, Monday. I'm just trying to Thursday. figure out when the bet. There's also Thursday nights at Farron. Most of softball is we're not at Farron, and I don't know how. Me personally, there's no reason why we can't put an extra team in a rotation of an hour and a half schedule at the I mean, Willow. Imagine, imagine if ten more kids came and signed up for yeah, rec. That's all it is. I, Monday night. No, I know. It that's, can it that's can fine. easily be done in the fall, and for the sake of keeping his team at the Willows, I mean, for I now it's just we could we could just to get yeah, it yeah. started before we. Well, right now we're good because rec hasn't started yet, so you know there is some flexibility there. But even if we let's just. Take fall, take one step at a time. You That's know, what just I'm this saying. fall. Let's try. It. I really yeah. Even, even in the spring, we had empty fields, practice times. I, we don't have anything no, empty no. in spring. It's so jam packed. It's not like even I remember like there was nights. Night. But it's yeah. no different. Yeah, than I think it was Monday. Seventh yeah. team in that division. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. We can make it work. Let's worry about spring and spring. Let's get fall going. Yeah, be, that would be, I think, a, a wise approach, and we can see how it goes. And and then these kids are more kind of ingrained into Royal Palm Beach, and you know the team is established. Uh, Jesse Hunter's doing our schedule this year, so. Yeah. Yes. We'll I, just, we'll I would take say it. let's wait until the schedule after we figure out how many teams are signed yeah. up and everything. I'm sure there will be one day in the middle of the week that we can get it. We can. I, there's no reason why. I and mean, I saw a lot of empty cages last year, even in the spring. We can. There's no reason why we can't incorporate that team for one field practice and one, just like the rec teams get one, an hour and a half, or you know, in that nine, nine division they get an hour and a half and one cage a week. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't be, think that's too much to ask for. That would be huge. That would allow us to keep keep this team here and, and you know, keep these kids here. And then spring comes around, that's guaranteed extra team in, in nine That's 12 right more there. people into our rec program. Yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, done. Anything else, sir? <laughs> All right. Look, now you got smoke coming out of his ears. <laughs> I would like to make a motion to end this meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. A boat. Here you go, Keith. I took this from Jesus. You're going to hit me in the face.